I'm Brad Spear from the Berkshire Eagle. Most folks, when they think of Berkshire County, think of Tanglewood, or they think about going on long hikes along mountain ridges. But, turns out that there's a historical aspect to the Berkshires too. You're gonna have a chance to see Hancock Shaker Village. A fabulous trip to the 19th century awaits. So stick around. So I'm speaking to Mary Beth Chilano, who's the communications manager at Hancock Shaker Village. Behind us is perhaps one of the most, well, most famous landmarks in Berkshire County. Tell me a little about the Roundstone Barn. Sure, the Roundstone Barn was built in 1826. It's the only Shaker Roundstone Barn in the world. It's the first Roundstone Barn in the United States. It did burn a few years later, but then the Shakers, to no surprise, rebuilt it better than it was the first time. And how many visitors do you have every year? More than 60,000. Our neighbors regionally and from around the world. Oftentimes people think of Hancock Shaker Village as a place to go to enjoy spring. Uh, you have a baby animals event we first, thing do. In, first thing in the spring. <laughs> and then they come here in the lush days of summer when the gardens are growing. And But what about the fall? We have pumpkins, the garden still in bloom but in a different phase. We talk about harvest and we're particularly excited in the last couple of years we've added some Halloween programming. There are haunted Hancock tours that are on Thursday, Friday and Saturdays. They start on October 18th and run through the 27th. Mm -hmm. We have Halloween at Hancock on Saturday, September 27th. So bring out your little ghouls and goblins in costume or not. There's trick-or-treating in historic buildings. We have fortune telling, story time, bobbing for donuts, make slime and take it home for someone else's <laughs> like table fun. to get messy. It's a great place it's, to take your family. It definitely is family friendly every day. Young and young at heart. Oh. <laughs> This large meeting room is just so beautiful. The Shakers had such a, a wonderful aesthetic, an outlook on the world that sort of reflected in the things they built and the things they designed. We certainly agree, and level of detail, the level of craftsmanship um, is, is really astounding, and that it's lasted this long and is still popular and copied. Now, I've come to Shaker Village in the past, and I've seen blacksmiths, I've seen uh, wool being woven, I've seen also, what kind of things go on here? Absolutely, so we do have volunteer blacksmiths, and they're often here on weekends, and will be here on Saturday the 27th. We have woodworkers who are here throughout the week and weekends, bending wood, lathing wood, both in the tannery and the chair shop. And then on Mondays, Kathy, our fearless weaver and spinner, spends time in the sister's shop demonstrating that task. Pretty fun to be able to see that kind of stuff go on. And do some of it yourself, actually. All right, so we've had a chance to see a good deal of Hancock Shaker Village. After Halloween is over, uh, are you still open come November? Because it gets dark a little bit earlier, we're open daily. 10 to 4 through November 12th. Then we close for two weeks to get all festive for the holidays. We celebrate Thanksgiving on the farm, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday after Thanksgiving. And then December 1st through 23rd, Hancock holidays include caroling and breakfast with Santa Claus, candlelit evenings, and holiday teas. And then before you know it's going to be spring with baby and animals. And then the baby animals will come back, Mary, yes. Mary Beth, you've been very kind. Thank you. Anytime, Brad. Thank you. One of the most beautiful things about visiting the Berkshires or New England is the fact that the fall offers some of the best apple picking, pumpkin picking, and as we're going to see, apple cider donut making places to visit in the world. So I'm here with Jamie at Yetski's Farm in Adams, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the history. This farm here actually was established in 1881. They started out as a chicken and dairy and pig farm where they planted a few apple trees. And when the Yeskis actually took this farm over, they planted the majority of the apple trees that you see now, where it's a 55 acre farm. It's got over 35 different varieties of apples, so many different heirlooms, which 
are original. They go back 50 to 100 years where they haven't been mix match, so to speak. Then 1983, they opened up their Crane Ave location. So down there they have over 35 greenhouses where they do all different types of plants, vegetables. They do wreaths, they do cemetery boxes. We have decorated Indian corn here. So many different things that we do. So, you know, I was also reading a little bit about the fact that some of the apple trees only grow a, a certain way and a certain elevation. And that's what's actually nice about being up here with the type of elevation that we are at. You know, because you see Mount Greylock right behind us, the tallest mountain in Massachusetts. So that along with the type of rain and precipitation and the four seasons, which are very helpful to apple trees. You know what I think is really great about this place, and I think there's a lot of people that may not understand because it really is a little bit hidden up here on the hill, is that this is a full day's experience if you want it to be. I would assume that you probably get a bunch of tours. Cheese! Things like <laughs> high schools. <laughs> you know, young people, young friends getting together. But do you work a lot with the schools as well and have visitors oh, like that? Absolutely. Just this morning, you know, we had um, the Williamstown Elementary come up with part of the North Adams school system. What happens is we give them a tour, show them around, let them pick a whole bunch of apples, then we show them in the donut room, which you guys will see later, and then they each get to leave with a nice hot donut. Well, I, you know, you mentioned the donut room, so I think that's 100% where we should go next. We hear they're pretty famous. <laughs> So we're gonna actually run through making apple cider donuts. So you can't get any fresher than this. So take us through the process a little bit. Well, first we wanna take some of our Yeski's apple cider. Then we get to add our donut mix. And then we add the rest of the cider. We mix it for a good three minutes in our ginormous mixer. Okay, now that we're done mixing our donut mix, we take it out of the mixer. We're gonna bring it over to our hopper on our donut machine. Okay. And then in this batch of mix, I'll get maybe seven to seven and a half dozen donuts. Oh wow. So on a Friday, I'm making somewhere between 100 and 150 dozen donuts. And I can make them only seven and a half at a time. So <laughs> let me tell ya, it takes a little time. <laughs> Then we get the machine ready to go. <laughs> this is where all the good stuff goes on, all the cinnamon and sugar. Well, they're not quite as popular, sure. but with the plain, you can definitely taste the, uh, the cider much stronger. All right, Jamie, so we've you know, seen a little bit about you know, your pumpkins, your mom's, all the things you have for sale. We've seen apple cider donuts being made. <laughs> we've walked around the property a little bit. And you were mentioning as we were walking around something called GAP certification. Um, tell them why that's important. Well, GAP stands for Good Agricultural Practices, and certain supermarkets require that you are actually GAP certified and go through that voluntary process to prove that your sanitation methods are well documented and followed. So it's always a good thing to show that you're going above and beyond to make sure that your product's the best that it can be. And I think more importantly, you said voluntary. Correct. Not something Absolutely. they require you to do, but because you know your practices and you want to be part of that sort of culture in, mm -hmm. in having that extra certification. Right. You, you oh yes, really it definitely helps. You know, we sell to several different supermarkets, so it's great to show that our hard work goes noticed. Ah, oh, that's great. So thank you so much. We have had the most wonderful day here, um, seeing everything that you have to see. And the, the last place that we're gonna end is actually in the store where you can get all kinds of produce and different things that are available uh, for that particular season. 
So Jamie, thank you so much uh, for having us and, and, and just allowing us to come up and have a wonderful day with you. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Mmm, so good. I'm not even lying, like that's, that's really good. Standing here in upstate New York, not very far from Berkshire County. It's only about 35 miles or so from Pittsfield. And I'm standing here with Bill Phillip, an apple grower in lovely, lovely territory here in Claverack, New York. And we're about to take a visit to Phillip Family Orchards and find out what they grow here. Bill, how long have you and your family owned the Phillip Orchards? Well, it's, it's been in the family for many generations. It was uh, 1973 that my father had this idea of going 100% pick your own. You know, if you pick your own, you will pick the best. So that's the point, is you, you have absolute selection and freedom to choose exactly what you want. No one's picking it for you, you're picking it for yourself, so you can get the best. And my brother and I, John Phillip, we've been the ones who've been keeping the business going. So between the two of you fellas, is it a year-round endeavor? What do you do oh, in yeah. the wintertime? Oh, well, that's, that's when all the pruning happens. That's because people say, you know, why do you prune in the winter? My theory is because that's when it's the only thing you can do. Yeah, <laughs> pruning happens in the winter. What about yeah. spring? What? Pretty soon we have to start uh, controlling the various pests. We don't use hardly any insecticides, uh, but we, use, we have to use fungicides. And we stopped doing that long before harvest. The orchards <laughs> must be beautiful in the springtime when they flower. Oh, yeah. Sure. Those apple blossoms yeah. just are yeah. just gorgeous. We have about 18 different varieties of apples and four or five varieties of pears. This is what's available right now. The land is very good here. Hudson Valley is a very fertile uh, region and it's always been a place for apples. We just try to make a, a nice environment for coming to pick and maybe have a picnic. You know, We've had family reunions here even. Even a marriage proposal I and mean, all kinds of things happen in Philip Orchards. <laughs> you know, people enjoy coming to yeah, come out and yeah, pick they, apples. I've done it ever since I was a little kid. My folks used to take me, and that's a, before right. they invented yeah. fire, for crying out loud. <laughs> All right, now at Bill's suggestion, we've walked down the hill just a little bit, and he's going to show us what he's got in the way of an orchard. Bill, what are we looking at over out this well, way? Our orchards are, uh, are numbered. And we have, when customers come, we give them a map like this. We stop at the barn for information and bags to pick into. Right. Then so people drive right out into the orchard and park wherever they're going to pick. Okay. And, uh, the rows have signs that indicate what's in that row. Oh, no kidding. Okay. And then each tree has a tag. You can see some of the tags on the trees that indicate exactly what it is. So that, uh, you know, we like people to feel they can know what they're picking. So tell me a little bit about this system that your dad created. Now, I come in, I pull in, I stop, and I get a bag? What no, do I you, get? You get information Okie doke. and bags that you can use to pick into. Okay. Each bag is half a bushel. Bushel is about 44 pounds, depending on the size of the fruit. So he could have a 22 pound bag. Yeah. Could you show me how to go about picking an apple? I think there, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a particular way to do it so it doesn't injure the fruit. Shall we go? All right, now Bill, what kind of an apple is this? Well, these are northern spies. And uh, I'm gonna twist and pull up and then it should come off. Twist, pull up, and it came right off. Boy, Here that's a beauty. Look at the size spine. of that. Let's go look at some red delicious. Okay. Now, Bill, you were telling me earlier that red delicious, when you buy them in the store, tend to be a little on the mealy side because they don't keep so well. Right. Let's try one right off the tree. There you go. Oh, that is delicious. <laughs> and what do they call them, delicious apples? That's right, very delicious. There you be. So we have a, a, an 
aisle for people to drive into yeah. and park down there. Yeah. Uh, but this is more of the typical uh, spacing. We've kept the traditional approach. It's better for pick your own. It's for people. Yeah, it's for... You come here to be able to enjoy picking apples with your family. We also have a wonderful website. That's philiporchardsny.com. So on a beautiful weekend afternoon in October, climb in the car and find your way to Claverack, New York. Excellent. Let's give it a shot. Right. Oh, that's fabulous. Mm.